What's up everyone and welcome to the much anticipated part 8 of the YOLO tutorial series and in this one we're going to look at how to train our model and how to test it. So what you see here is my second version of the model and you can see I'm getting a much higher confidence factor compared to what I showed in part 8 of this series. For here I'm getting about over 75% confidence factor. I can spin the fidget spinner and for pretty much all the orientations I'm still detecting it. And it's not perfect but when I'm holding it I can still detect it. Um, not perfect but sometimes yeah we're still getting some level of detection but anyways this model is a lot better than the first one I displayed. So in this one like I said we're going to look at how to train and how to test so let's get into it. So if you've made it this far in the tutorial series, then go ahead and congratulate yourself because you definitely deserve it. As you know, downloading all those images and annotating them is quite a bit of work. So if you've done that, you should definitely feel proud. And we're in the home stretch. We don't have much left to do. So we can break this last part up into three main parts. The first thing we're going to do is modify a CFG file so that it has the proper final layer so that way we can train on our data set. Next we're going to see how to call flow so that way we can train on our data set and generate new weights for our model. And finally we're going to look at how to load those weights and test our model to see how it performs. Yeah, so before we get into it, I just want to point out one small correction I need to make from the previous video. In the draw box file that I had written, well that one was written and it works for Python 3.5 but for some reason you get an error when you run it on 3.6 and the error comes when you try and close the PLT figure. So in my previous one I had put the PLT close statement under this if statement where if we hit the Q key it runs all this. Well for some reason when you run that with Python 3.6 it just shuts the program down. So instead I created a draw box underscore Py36 and basically all I did was move the PLT close figure to this section here. So if you're on 3.6, grab the underscore Py36 version of Drawbox. If you're on 3.5, stick with the one that we wrote in the previous video. So with that out of the way, let's jump into how we need to modify the CFG file. So we can find the instructions on how to modify the CFG file in the Darkflow repo readme file. So if I scroll down, come to the section that says train on your own data set. So basically here's the part that explains how we need to modify the CFG file. So what we're going to do is modify the tiny YOLO VOC file. And this one they recommend for training. I've tried training on the main YOLO one, so the YOLO.CFG file, but don't expect to train it if you've got anything other than like a 1080 Ti or a Titan X. I think the minimum is at least 10 or 11 gigabytes. But anyways, we're going to use the tiny YOLO VOC file. So what we need to do is in the last layer, we need to change the number of classes to the number of classes that our data set has. So in our case, we've got one class, just fidget spinners. So we're going to make this a one. And if you've got more, just match it to the number of classes you have in your training set. Then the next thing we need to do is the convolution layer right above it. We need to change the filters. So the way we calculate the filters, it's going to be the number of classes plus five, and then we're going to multiply everything by five. So we've got one class. So one plus five is six. Then we multiply by five. So our number of filters is going to be 30. So let's jump over and create that new CFG file and modify it. So right now I'm in the CFG folder of the Darkflow master folder. And what I'm going to do is find the tiny YOLO VOC model. And I'm just going to create a duplicate of it. And the convention that they recommend is to add a dash and then the number of classes. So in this case, we'll do one C for one class and make sure I've got the period for the extension. Cool. So now what we'll do is open this up in Atom and we'll edit it. So we'll come down to the last or come down to the bottom 
and what we're going to change is the number of classes so since we only have one class we'll make this a one then we come up to the convolution layer and we need to change the filters so remember since we've got one filter it's going to be one plus five times five or 30. and that's it that's all we need to do to the cfg file so i'm just going to hit save and now we're going to look at how to call flow and to train the model now that we've modified our CFG file, the next thing we need to do is there's a TXT file called labels.txt. And in this one, we need to modify it to give the name of the class that we're training for. So in our case, since we've got one class and we're gonna call it fidget spinner, we're gonna open this file up and just modify it to say fidget spinner. So come to the Darkflow master repo folder and come down until you find the labels.txt. So if I just go ahead and open this up, you can see that I've just got one label or one class and I'm just gonna call it fidget spinner. If you've got more, then you just label them um, or just give the names for all the classes that you want. But like I said, for our case, we've just got one. So go ahead and enter your class name, hit save, and the next thing we can do is take a look at the command to train. So we're going to call flow, then we're going to load our new model. So in our case, it's gonna be tiny-yolo-voc-1c.cfg. Then we're going to load the weights and we're gonna start with the pre-trained weights. So when you train a new model, you always start with the pre-trained weights that we downloaded from the other site. If you don't have them, you can just come to this site here and come to the tiny YOLO. Actually, it's the tiny YOLO VOC weights. So just click here, download them, move them into the bin folder. So those are the weights we're going to load. Then we call dash dash train. So if we're starting new, we just call dash dash train and that's it. If we're picking up from some earlier weights that we've trained and we want to continue training, we would put the step number, and I'll show you what that means in a second, but for now, just put dash dash train. Then we just specify dash dash annotation, and we specify where the annotation files are, and then we do dash dash dataset, and we specify where the images are. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm in my Darkflow master directory, and what I'm gonna do is open up a new CMD window, and let's just minimize that. So, like I said, we're going to start with Python, then flow, then we're going to specify the model. So we're going to call dash dash model, then specify where it's at. So in our case, it's the folder is called CFG, and our model is called tiny yolo dash voc dash one c dot CFG. Next thing we're going to do is load the weights. So remember, we're just going to da call dash dash load and then load the pre-trained weights from the tiny VOC model. So it'll be in the bin folder and it's called tiny-yolo-voc-weights. Next thing we're gonna do is call dash dash train and we're just going to leave it as that because we're gonna start fresh. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do dash dash annotation. And where did we save it? So the just to give myself a reminder, I created this folder, new model data, and then I created a folder called annotations. So that's where we're gonna specify it. So new underscore model underscore data slash annotations. Next, we're gonna specify where the images are. So that's dash dash data set. And we saved it in that same new model data folder and the folder was called images. Next thing, I wanna use my GPU. So we're gonna do dash dash GPU. And instead of calling 1.0, I'm just gonna do 0 0.8 because when I call 1.0, I have a problem with my screen capture software. So if I lower it, it leaves a little bit of resources for the screen capture and then everything works. So. If you want, you can set it to 1.0, but for me, I'm gonna do 0.8. Next thing I'm gonna do is dash dash epoch. So with this, we can specify how many epochs we wanna do. And 
The number of epochs you need to do really depends on how big your training data set is. If you've got a really big or a ton of images, then you can do less epochs. If you have a small set, then you're going to need to train more. But for me, I'm just going to do 300 and the weights get saved automatically every 125 steps. So you can always end it early. Um, so best thing to do is just leave it at a high number and you can end it early, but the default value is a thousand. So I'm going to lower it to 300 and that's it. That's all we need to call. So let's go ahead and run this, get the model going. Like always, we should see those layers display first. So, oops, and okay, I called something wrong. So let's try this again. It was, dot weights. All right, let's try again. Bring this up a little bit. Okay, we get the layers loading. We get our GPU statements going. We've got some stuff going and we're training. All right, so here you can see we've got the loss and then we have the moving average loss. And yeah, so we're just going to be monitoring this, letting it train until we get it down to as low as it can go. So ideally you want to get this to like maybe one or below one. For me, I had to end it at about 1.5 just because I let it go for many epochs and it wasn't lowering anymore. So basically let this thing go until it just isn't lowering anymore and then you can kill it. So on Windows, it's just control C to, to stop, the, stop the training. And just to point out, while it's training, there's a folder called CKP and all your files will load here. So for each, checkpoint you're gonna see one of these um, this is basically the weights and then there's a checkpoint file there's an index file and a profile so every time you see this uh, you'll see a statement that says it's saved it's gonna save it here so that's it we're just gonna let this thing run until the until the loss gets to a minimum and what I'm going to do is pause it now, let this run for a bit, and then show you how to load those weights once we're done training. All right, now that we've done training, we've generated a bunch of weights in our checkpoint folder. Now what I'm going to show you is how to load those weights into a model and then test and see how our model is doing. So if you remember back in part four, I showed you a, well, basically we used a webcam and we processed images from the webcam to look for the object or try and detect the object. So I'm basically using that exact same code. And if you're unfamiliar, I'll link in the description the, the GitHub code and I'll add a link to the video up above. But basically what we're going to do is in our options dictionary, our model is going to be that tiny YOLO-VOC-1C. So this is the model that we're going to be loading and then in order to load the weight, if you come to the checkpoint folder, you'll see that every 125 steps, there's a new set of data saved. So in my case, I went all the way up to 5,500. This was the last step that I let my training go to. So instead of specifying the file, all we need to do is specify the step number. So in my case, I'm just gonna put 5,500. So I put 5,500 here. I can adjust my threshold. So I'm gonna go with 0.1. Um, again, depending on how good your model is, you might need to lower it, or if it's really good, you can keep it up high, but my model's not the best. So I'm gonna go with 0.1. And, I'm, and again, I'm gonna set the GPU to 0.8 so I can continue screen sharing without stopping. And then the rest of it's all the same. This is all the same code. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and run this. We're loading our model. And okay, what did I do wrong? Hold on, just gonna pause one sec. Okay, I found the mistake. So I'm loading weights that I had trained previously. And when I trained it previously, I had named my CFG file something different. So instead of dash one C, 
I had called it FS. So all my training weights are, or basically all my weights that I generated have this dash FS extension on it. So just to, just need to correct that. And now I'm going to go ahead and run it. Cool, so our model loads and we get our webcam image and our fidget spinners there and we're detecting it with our model. So in this one you can see we're getting 15% and at different orientations we get different values. Uh, it goes up as high as like 70 to 80% and not all orientations de are detected like here. Here we're not getting anything. And what this means is we didn't provide enough training data with this orientation, so the solution for it, just more training data, more images. But if you saw part four of this video, or maybe it was part five of this video, you saw my previous model was really poor. I'd only used like 200 to 250 images, and I was barely getting like six to 7% accuracy. And with this one, we're seeing a huge improvement. We're getting a lot better confidence factor, 20, 30, sometimes 70% accuracy. So it's not perfect. As you can see, when I'm holding it, it has a hard time detecting it. So I need more images with me, with a person holding it, but it does detect it sometimes. And yeah, like I said, it's not perfect, but it's a big step up from before. And with more training data, we can really improve this model. So that's pretty promising. I think with with this example under our belt, we can we can probably train this to detect pretty much anything. It really comes down to how much images you have and how well they're annotated. So I'm going to call this video to an end. If you guys trained your model on something else, I'd like to know what you guys trained on, what images, how many images, how many epochs you trained on, and let me know how how well your model is doing, what kind of confidence factors are you getting? And again, if you made it to this point, then, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. You should be pretty proud of yourself because this is some, you know, this is some pretty good stuff we're doing here. And yeah, so this is, this will probably be the last video in the YOLO tutorial series. I might do one more just to um, correct some mistakes I made in the first few videos. And I can see some improvements I can make to the code. So um, there's a chance I'll load some new versions of the code on GitHub. But with that being said, if you guys like the video, leave a like. If you've got any questions, comment below. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. Also, you can use the Facebook group to chat more. And yeah, if you guys like the content, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.